Socrates once stated that we should follow the argument wherever it leads. When we look at the most profound question of life, does God exist? We should certainly follow His advice. When we do, we'll find evidences that show us God is real. Let's look at six proofs that show God exists. Number one, the universe must have a cause. The most fundamental law of science is the law of cause and effect. And it says that for every material effect we see, there is a cause that came before it or was simultaneous to it and that is greater than it. The universe is a material effect. So what caused the universe? You see, if you don't believe in a creator, then you have to suggest something like uh, a singularity. That's what is popular today, that there was some type of singularity that exploded in something called the Big Bang. But then when you try to get down to the bottom of what's a singularity, well, what we hear from the scientific community that suggest to us, the, the cosmologists, they say, well, a singularity was something that popped into existence from nothing. Do you know that if there ever were a time when there was nothing, that's exactly what we would have now? The idea that something popped into existence from nothing is simply not a scientific idea. You see, they're suggesting that that singularity is somehow natural, but it behaves supernaturally. They say that that singularity wouldn't have followed the laws of nature. Well, then, so what are we left with? We're left with the fact that the universe had a beginning and it was not a natural cause. It was something above nature. It was something super nature, something supernatural. And so when we see the material effect of the universe, we can know that there was a supernatural creator that caused the universe. Proof number two, design demands a designer. It is a truism that everybody recognizes that this universe looks designed. In fact, when we see the various different aspects of nature and we see birds and squirrels and trees and we see all of the things that they do so well, many times we as humans, we try to copy and mimic that design, but often we don't do nearly as well as the design that we see in nature. We look at the design of the human body and the human hand and the arm and the leg and the brain and we see that those are some of the most advanced, technologically savvy pieces of equipment ever put together and we try to mimic them and copy them and we can't do it as well. Why? Because this universe exhibits design from the starry sky at night to the fingertips on your hand. The design is overwhelming. It's everywhere. Where does design originate? Well, what you and I both know is that when you see things that function and they're complex, that design comes from an intelligent designer. Big explosions just simply don't bring about order. They don't cause things that are functional and complex to come into existence. The design we see in the universe demands a supernatural, intelligent designer. Proof number three. Life demands a supernatural life giver. You see, in the material world, we have come to understand that there is a law of biology called the law of biogenesis. Law of biogenesis simply says this. That in this material, natural world, life comes from previously existing life of its own kind. Now, when we look at how people used to think about life, they said, no, life can arise spontaneously from non-living chemicals. And yet every single biological experiment has shown us that that simply is biologically impossible. Life doesn't arise from non-living chemicals. From where did life arise where did life originate if it doesn't arise from non-living chemicals? You see, the idea that there's no God suggests to us that there had to be some singularity without a cause that exploded and that explosion brought about design, which we've never, ever seen happen. And then ultimately, somewhere the non-living chemicals gave rise to life. But that's biologically impossible. Life 
demands a supernatural creator. Proof number four, moral law demands a moral law giver. If some things are objectively morally right and other things are objectively morally wrong, then there must be a God. You see, if we evolve from primordial slime over multiplied millions of years, at what point did objective moral values arise? We don't look at a dog and say that that dog objectively morally violated some rule when he steals a bone from another dog. We don't say, hey, he violated a objective moral value. We just don't say that. But we do say that humans can perpetrate things that are objectively morally wrong, that humans can be involved in things that are morally right. If that's true, there must be a God. Proof number five, free will exists. The atheistic idea that there is no God is founded on the idea of materialism, the idea that this material world is all that there is, all that there was, and all that there ever will be. Because of that, Atheism has to suggest that you as a person don't really have free will, that there is no being inside of your body or brain that is super matter, that really what's going on in your brain is just electrons bouncing around and you're the product of those bounces and you don't really make decisions on your own. It's just the physical laws and properties going on in your brain. If you are watching this video of your own volition, then the fact of the matter is there has to be a God that can account for that free will that you as a person have. There has to be a God if there is free will. And proof number six, human reasoning. You see, we reason on a regular basis. We understand abstract ideas. If we were products of blind, chance, random processes over multiplied millions of years, reasoning and the laws of reasoning simply would have no explanation. And yet we reason together on a regular basis. From where does reason arise? It's got no naturalistic, atheistic explanation. Anthony Flew, the atheist who wrote Theology and Falsification, the most popular atheistic paper for the last hundred years, the last century. In 2006, he co-wrote a book titled, There Is a God, How the World's Most Notorious Atheist Became a Believer. He stated that his rule of life had always been to follow the evidence where it leads. And he said he followed that evidence. And it led him to the conclusion that there is a supernatural, intelligent God. Let's let the evidence lead us to that same conclusion.